Imagine standing at a riverbank and to get to the other side, you need to cross a plank. Though you are afraid of the task ahead, the presence of your loved ones across the river gives you the push you need to start the journey. But as you begin making steps forward, they begin to pull the plank from under your feet. And all your mind can think is, why would they do this or will I survive? Now, these type of experiences can fester some ungodly thoughts. But have you ever wondered why God exposed their true intentions to you? Well, don't go anywhere because we're going to talk about that today. Hi family, welcome back to my channel. My name is Candice and it's always a pleasure to have you with me. So I would have shared in multiple videos past that I would have gone through a traumatic season of grief and loss. And I can tell you while going through that season, support was the one thing I expected from my loved ones and specific friends. And even though I got the typical, hey, I'm checking in on your mental health or you're going to get through this or we're standing here with you. Somehow my spirit could not shake the deception I felt behind those smiling faces and guess what? Eventually God revealed the truth. When I found out the truth, I initially felt anger, I wanted to get even, and I even had some ill wishes for them. But of course God was not going to play along with my semblances so he began to talk on my heart with his word. Did I want to hear that at that time? No, I didn't. But it was in my time of prayer that I began to realize why God exposes our haters or our enemies to us. And these are five reasons I want to share with you. Firstly, it's to bring awareness and for our protection. There are times, this does not apply all the time, but there are times it's to weed them out of our lives. It is to test our hearts. It is for us to gain wisdom. And it is for us to pray for them. When we take a look at Job's friend in Job chapter 22 verses 5 to 11, we see something happening that we would not expect from genuine friends. And that is they flipped on him. They began to remind him of his past failures and equated it as to why he was being tested. And this is what they said to Job. This is what his goodly friends said to him. Is not your wickedness great? There is no end to your iniquities for you have taken pledges of your brothers for nothing and stripped the naked of their clothing. You have not given water to the weary to drink and you have withheld bread from the hungry. But you, Job, the man with power possessed the land, and a favored and accepted man dwelt in it. You have sent widows away empty-handed, and the arms of the fatherless have been broken. Therefore snares are round about you, and sudden fear troubles and overwhelms you. Your light is darkened so that you cannot see, and a flood of water covers you. Now this may have been such a revelation for Job to realize, wow, this is what my friends were thinking about me on the inside. Even though they were my friends, it took such a season for me to hear the unspoken thoughts that they carried. But when God intervened, what happened next? Not only did God correct his friends, but Job had to pray for them. And this is in alignment with Matthew chapter 5 verse 44. To love our enemies, to bless those who curse us, to do good to those who hate us, and to pray for those who spitefully use us and persecute us. We know that Job was a rich man, and so taking into consideration what friendship is usually like, we can only assume, since it was not clearly stated in the word of God, that Job may have helped his friends along the way, and uh, that would equate to probably financial help in our time, but he may have helped his friends along the way. And so to hear what they had to say, in his season of need could have possibly made him feel like there was a season in my life I was used. But guess what? Job still obeyed God. He prayed for his friends. He blessed them. And this is a model that we can use. We have to understand that when God exposes our haters or our enemies to us, it is not for us to bear malice in our hearts, but it's for God's name to be glorified. And so I ask you these difficult questions. Who do you need to pray for? Who do you need to forgive? Who do you possibly need to love from a distance? Understand for a person to be deceptive to you, it shows a mark of brokenness within them and it's an ultimate sign that they need a revelation of Jesus Christ. And for you who may say, the person who hurt me goes to church. The person who hurt me is a Christian. Well, being in the church or declaring yourself, labeling yourself as a Christian does not equate to being whole or healed. Being in Christ does. Being in true relationship with Christ does. So my challenge for you today is to firstly be thankful that God exposed them and take on the job to pray for them. That's not going to be easy. 
But God is going to honor your humility. He's going to honor your obedience. And so for this process that you may be going through or may have gone through and still did not heal properly from it or may go through, I pray you don't have to go through this, but if you do go through it, I want to say this, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So I hope you are blessed. I hope you understand the reason for exposure and allow God to channel the information in you in the right direction, which is through prayer, through wisdom, and definitely through loving even those who may not genuinely love you. Until next time, take care.